Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to find out the support reactions for this simply supported beam where there is a trapezoidal load acting on the beam. The beam has a length of 10 meter and there is a trapezoidal load acting on the beam. So the starting magnitude of the load is 2 kN per meter from this hinge support and it increasing and increasing up to the magnitude of 4 kN per meter at the end of this support which is a roller support. So we want to find out the support reactions for this beam. So if we draw the free body diagram for this beam, so it will look like this. This is a hinge support so it can take the vertical reaction. If this is let's suppose support A and this is B, so it can take the vertical reaction R A Y and here it can also take the horizontal reaction R A X. It is a roller support, so it can only take the vertical reaction which will be the R B. Because it is a roller, so it cannot take any horizontal reaction. So as we know there is no horizontal load acting on this beam, so we can easily say that the horizontal component of this hinge support is equal to zero because there is no horizontal load acting on the beam. As there is only vertical, so we have only vertical support reactions which we can easily represent by RA. So we are interested to find out this RA and RB. So these two supports are unknown to us. For this, we have to draw the free body diagram and then now we have to find out the this load, that how much load acting on this beam. As this is uniformly varying load and we have to convert this load into pointed load and then we can easily find out the support reactions. So the next step will be to convert the uniformly varying load to pointed load. This is a uniformly varying load because it changes over the length of the beam. We want to change this load, uniformly varying load into pointed load. So for this, we can divide this whole trapezoidal into two parts. One is this one, which is a rectangle. This will be A1. And one is this one, which is the triangle A2. So we want to find out the area of this rectangle and area of triangle. And this will be the load acting on the spin in the pointed form. So A1 is the area of this rectangle, this rectangle with the height of 2 and with the width of 10. So the area will be base into height as it is a rectangle. So base is 10 meter. And the height of this rectangle is 2 kN per meter. So meter meter will be cancelled. We will only remain with kN. So 20 kN is the area of this rectangle, which means 20 kN is the pointed load from this rectangle. Now the area of this triangle will give us also the pointed load of this triangle. So it will be A2. And the area of the triangle is half base into height. Half base is again 10 meter. But for this triangle, the height will be this one. So the total is the 4. If we subtract this 2, because 2 is from here up to here is 2 meter. It's 2 kN per meter. So if we subtract from 4, this 2. So if we subtract 2 from 4, we get 2. So this height is 2 kN per meter. So this is the height for the triangle, multiplying it with the 2 kN per meter. Meter meter will be again cancelled and we will only remain with the unit of kN, so it is 10 kN. So this is E2 means the pointed load from the triangle. So we convert the uniformly varying load into pointed load. The rectangle is 20 kN, in the triangle it is 10 kN. Now these loads will act at the centroid of each area. It is a rectangle, 20 kN, so it will act at the center of the rectangle. The, this is the width 20 meter, so the base divided by 2 will be the centroid of a rectangle and it is 10 divided by 2, it is 5 meter. So it means it is a 5 meter this load will act. Five meter. 
This is the easy way to find out the centroid of a rectangle just to divide the width by 2. So the rectangle load is acting at a distance of 5 meter from this support. What about the triangle load? To find out the triangle load, we have to use this formula B by 3. This is the way how to find out the centroid for a triangle B by 3. So B is 10 meter divided by 3, we get 3.33 meter. So this is the centroid of the triangle from the left end. So this load will act now. This 10 kN will load it here at a distance of 3.33 meter. So 3.33 is from left end, from right end. So if we subtract from 10, 10 minus 3.33, we got here 6.67 meter. So the remaining distance is 6.67 meter. You can also find in the other way, this is b by 3, you can also find by 2b by 3. So 2 divided by 3 into b, b is 10 meter. So from this we get 6.67 meter. So this is the centroid from the left end. The load of the uh, rectangle will act at the centroid of the rectangle, which is the half of the width. But in case of the triangle, it is not equal to half of the width, but it is equal to B by 3 from right support here, B by 3, this distance, and 2B by 3 from this support, from left end, this is 2B by 3. So 2B by 3 to 6.6 from this end and 3.33 meter from this end, our load will act at this point. So this was the most difficult part that we find out the support reactions and at which distance this load will act. Now it's very easy to find out the support reactions. We can take this equation, equilibrium equation, that let's suppose summation of movement at point E equal to zero and let's suppose clockwise movement is taken as positive and the anti-clockwise movement is taken as negative. Now the first load that creates the movement about point E is this one. So it is acting downward and it acting in the clockwise direction about point A so it is, will be taken as positive 20 multiplying it with the moment arm the moment arm is the distance from this point up to this point which is 5 meter again this load is also creates the moment about point A in the clockwise direction so it will be plus 10 multiplying it with the moment arm the moment arm is the distance from this point up to this point which is 6.61 and this RB creates a moment about point A in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be taken as negative because it was our sign assumption. RB multiplying it with the moment arm, which is the distance from this point up to this point, which is the 10 meter. Summation of moment at point A equal to zero. Now if we shift this video to the right side, it will be positive. So it will become 10 RB. And here it will, I will get here 20 to 500 and adding with this, we multiply this, we got 66.7. So RB comes out to be, if we add these two values and divide by 10, so we will get here 16.67 kN. So this is the RB reaction here, which is 16.67 kN. Now to find out the RA, we will use simply the summation of moment equation that summation of sorry the summation of vertical forces equal to zero let's suppose the clockwise the upward force is taken as positive and the downward forces are taken as negative so the upward forces are r a and r b these are acting in the upward direction and downward forces are taken as negative so are this one and this one are acting in downward direction minus 20 minus 10 equal to 0. Summation of all the vertical forces equal to 0. Now this RB we know that 16.67. So RA equal to, if we shift these values into the right side, so we will get this minus into plus sign. So 20 into 10, 30, it will become plus 30 minus RB, where RB is 16.67. So if we subtract this value, we got 13.33 kN, which is the RA support reaction. 
13.33. So this is the way how to find out the support reactions when there is a trapezoidal or uniformly varying load acting on the beam. Simply you have to convert this uniformly varying load into the pointed load like I did it here in the rectangular part and then in the triangular part and then you have to find out the centroid for each of them by this method and then you can find out by taking the summation of moment at any point equal to zero and then summation of vertical forces equal to zero to find out the support reactions. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.